Hi, this is Shadi and in this video I'm gonna be discussing a little bit about Jigoro Kano and try to see a little bit his technical side. There's a lot of kata demonstrations but a kata doesn't reveal your character, it's just a demonstration. So here in this demonstration in Tokyo, Jigoro Kano is demonstrating his favorite technique and that is the ukigoshi or the floating hips and we're gonna be discussing hip tosses in this video. So I can also see that not only his tokuwaza was ukigoshi but also he was particularly left-handed uh, so as you can see here while he's demonstrating it in tendoku renshu style or without an opponent and here he can see with a demonstration he's doing the uh, ukigoshi he goes in from the left so he is left-handed uh, wraps the arm around the waist uh, he enters just one hip and rolls his uh, his partner he doesn't lift him like other lifts like uh, ogoshi for example or tsuri goshi and we're gonna see um, how in judo there's as you can see here he just lets him glide on his hip he doesn't bend down and lifts him up on his hips and then throws him so because in judo there is a lot of um, how do you say semantics and pl uh, word play when it comes to techniques uh, for example here he grabbed the belt that's another technique we're gonna see all of it so it's nice to know that like I've mentioned he's he wasn't competing he was not a, never a competitor he competed while he was still training jiu-jitsu uh, and also he was uh, going against a sumo wrestler and that's how he found the variation of kataguruma going down on your knees and let that opponent really roll on his shoulder even though he was a sumo wrestler far heavier and far bigger I've discussed this in my uh, Jigoro Kano video how he grew up and found jujutsu so it's very important uh, to know the differences between the hip tosses and I'm gonna get this I'm gonna get into them uh, in a bit but uh, this video is dedicated to Kano's technical side and like I've mentioned it's nice to know that he was left-handed his favorite technique was ukigoshi floating hips and also you know as someone in his stature he was I believe uh, 156 centimeters tall I don't know how that translates to uh, foot uh, feet and inches but that's pretty short so a technique like ukigoshi would be a very good fit for him just let the opponent roll all over his uh, hip to the other side and gets that ippon so let's see it here uh, in nage no kata and how practical that technique is so you see here you use your opponent's momentum as he's charging and you just turn around grab the hips pull on the sleeve and let them roll on one side of your hips or one hip so but it is different from ogoshi uh, a lot of people even though they don't train judo they know about ogoshi uh, it's a very basic technique it's very di it's different from ukigoshi but uh, a lot of people tend to mistake the two because you know it's you just see someone hip tossing someone and you just say oh it's ogoshi because it's the uh, you know famous term if you go on YouTube and Google uh, judo throws for MMA the first video you're gonna see is someone teaching you ogoshi and haraigoshi so here you can see you lift up you bend down look how farther down he is he bends the knees and he just lifts up his hips in order to you know roll his opponent lift them up high and then they fall down it's uh, different from ukigoshi so like I said I'm gonna discuss a little bit the differences in hip tosses in judo because there is a lot of semantics so as you can see in ogoshi you really lift up your opponent you can see the, their legs go up in the air while ukigoshi they just glide on one side of your hips or one hip and they just fall down far easier than what ogoshi is so and here we see a de demonstration in help sharp video ukigoshi you can see they just roll no need to bend the knees and it is far more simpler and far less strength because in ogoshi you need to really bend down and use like a really lifting momentum 
with your legs you need to have strong legs believe it or not and just uh, balance out your opponent on your hips so as we can see here they're demonstrating ukigoshi see there's no need to bend the knees all you have to do is bounce your uh, hips to the forward and then just bring them back and you will roll your opponent uh, on their hips on the ground i'm sorry and instead of lifting them up in the air and then toss them down so here let's have the alp sharp production video explain the difference uh, between the two let's see the difference between an ogoshi and ukigoshi in ogoshi keep your knees bent and your waist low then straighten the knees and make the throw with an upward pulling movement in ukigoshi your waist is only lowered shallowly and your lower left hip is made the fulcrum as you twist and throw there is also tsuri goshi which is a hip toss but really grabbing the belt to use it as a pulling uh, like pulling leverage and you can also use the belt from the front in order to load them on your hips uh, so here you can see like a lot of people like to use like a high Russian arm especially here in France and they grab the belt and just throw Kayla Harrison does this Gvinyashvili does this so this is considered Tsuri Goshi and not Ogoshi or Ukigoshi you can either even grab the front of the belt and load them on your hips and throw so like I said um, a little bit of differences really do play a part in the judo you know nomenclature nomenclature uh, here is uh, Neil Adams demonstrating ukigoshi he calls it half hips throw because you really insert one hip to the middle and here uh, an example you see they just roll on their shoulder you don't need to lift them up that's a great example of ukigoshi the true definition of floating hips look she doesn't even bend her knees she just uh, let her opponent roll on one hip uh, here it is another example at driving ukigoshi he doesn't lift them up he just uses one hip and let their opponent roll he uses a little bit of a drive but then again this is a competition uh, far different than uh, ogoshi i talked about ogoshi in my iliades video here let's check it out uh, he just really lifts his opponent and uses like a bend in the knee to really load his opponent or you can consider this ukigoshi as well because uh, they just floated on them but like I said uh, when you use like strength and really lift up your opponent this is you know, ogoshi or tsurigoshi but I can understand that Gvinyashvili competes in the minus 90 and Kayla Harrison used to compete if I'm not mistaken in the minus 78 so these are pretty heavy categories so pulling a lot with your hands and really lifting with your hips uh, is needed at this point in competition and also don't forget the high level of competition uh, they were in Olympics and IJF World Tour and also the heavy opponents so let's look at it this way if you know the hip toss is just someone really was brought close to your hip and glided on them that's ukigoshi but when you lift with the legs and really have their legs up in the air and loading them on your back then that's ogoshi grabbing the belt is tsurigoshi um i'm gonna i think i'm gonna make another video talking about all these techniques that look like each other but they're not for example in my uh, Deashi Harai video, Fabio Basile's analysis, I, before I started, I had to clear up the difference between Okuri Ashi Harai and Deashi Harai, you know, sweeping one leg and sweeping both legs. But if you go, for example, in the Jiu Jitsu world, they're all considered foot sweeps. Even uh, Ochigari and Ko uh, Ochigari, they're just called inner sweeps. But everything else, Kosoto, uh, even like Osotogari and Kosoto Deashiharai, uh, De Okuri Ashiharai are just considered foot sweeps. Even Aikido, believe it or not, there's a technique called Koshinage, uh, and there's so many variations to it that it becomes Sodetsuri Komigoshi, Ogoshi, uh, 
Tsurigoshi, uh, even uh, Ippon Seonage uh, in some examples, but it's all considered Koshinage, which is like hip throw. I know uh, Seonage is technically uh, a hand technique or Teiwaza, but when you use your hips to load them, you know, it becomes even Uchimata, but when you lift with the hips, but like I said, in Judo, they have 67 throws and so many of them resemble each other and this is why because when you change a little bit of differences in whatever you are doing uh, it changes the name of the technique um, there's also it depends on your opponent's positioning for example if i go for a sweep and i sweep both legs that's okuri ashiharai it depends on how he's positioned but if i, I manage to sweep one leg that's the ashiharai so I'm going for a sweep but it depends on his movement and his posture and position which will determine the outcome of the technique so that's uh, so you could be <laughs> really doing I could go for an okuri and just get a deashi but it it's really funny how there's a lot of semantics and wordplay in judo but in short Jigoro Kano was left-handed and also his tokuwaza was the ukigoshi you can even see in the beginning he grabbed the belt, so that makes it Tsurigoshi technically, but you know. So if you enjoyed this video and you have another thing to add, because I know uh, memorizing techniques is very complex, especially when you're a beginner. Uh, I like to doing these videos to really show differences and analyze a little bit of the techniques and the details which make them have different names. So again, if you have anything else to add, Please share it down below. This was Shady and thank you for listening.